pussies is a word that is quite often associated with good plays in neutral. Whether it be with punishing pokes or weaving in and out of threats, it's used in a very broad way. Is this footsies? Yes. Is this also footsies? Yes, they're all good footsies, Brent. So what exactly is footsies? Footsies is the art of attacking and defending when neither player has an overwhelming advantage over the other. A prime example is the actions players take at round start when both players, barring certain character matchups, have a fairly equal footing in terms of spacing and frame advantage. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky because there's a lot of things players can do in this situation. They can press a button that's strong in that range, they can back off and create space, or they can dash or jump in for a risky attack. The wealth of options is quite high, and what makes them good or bad will also depend on opponent character and playstyle. You're obviously not going to take an approach against a zoner as if you're going against a short range rushdown character. In other words, footsies is like the worst science or math. It encompasses a huge field and within it a variety of different depths where the usage of them will vastly differ based on the game you play and the character you use. So I thought it'd be a good idea to make a series explaining the different aspects of footsies. And for this episode, I'll be talking about range of threats and playing around pokes and whip punishes. I'll be using Street Fighter as a primary example, but remember these concepts apply to pretty much any fighting game to varying capacity. Alright, let's first talk about the concept of ranges. Every character has a range they are effective in. For example, zoners such as Dalsim have long range normals and projectiles to hit opponents from very far away. In characters such as Kami, an aggressive rushdown character doesn't have much it can do at far ranges but have incredibly strong close up options. If these two are in a match, it's Dawson's best interest to keep Kami at his medium and heavy attack ranges as at this distance, none of Kami's non-committal attacks reach. Kami, on the other hand, wants to get in and stay in as she has far stronger damage potential up close. The strength is exasperated by Dalsum's lack of overdrive reversals and fairly weak damage potential off of his fast close range normals. So to give a general idea, this is Dalsum's effective range, and this is Kami's in the matchup. It's very important for each player to try to keep their effective distance and create strategies to maintain these positions. I did two in-depth videos using Street Fighter V and Undernight Inbirth regarding this topic, so I suggest checking those out for more detail. You can think them like the prequel to the series. With that explained, let's now look at a less extreme matchup, Chun-Li vs. Marisa. For this section, we're going to focus on a specific range and set of interactions for the sake of brevity. Remember, this is a concept video and not a character matchup guide, so please understand if I omit some situations and conditions. Anyways, what we'll be focusing on will be mid-range interaction. This is the distance where both characters have tools to convert non-committal moves into combos. Starting off with Marisa, we have Standing and Crouching Medium Punch. Standing Medium Punch has less range but can be cancelled into a target combo for easy confirms, and has a 7 frame startup. Crouching Medium Punch is also cancelable but is a frame slower at 8. On the other side, chun -Li has two strong options, forward or back Medium Punch and Crouching Medium Kick. Both have a 7 frame startup and is cancelable into special moves.
At first glance, these moves look very similar in terms of speed and damage potential, but there is one crucial difference. The range. Chun-Li's forward medium punch outranges Murray's instead medium punch, and her crouching medium kick gets farther than Murray's crouching medium punch. This difference makes it difficult for Marisa to fight toe-to-toe -to -toe as Chun-Li's effective mid-range is slightly longer than hers. So what can she do to combat Chun-Li's normals, especially her long crouching medium kick? One common tactic is to walk back out of Chun-Li's attack range and bait an attack. By doing this, you can visually confirm the attack missing and do a counter-attack on the opponent's recovery. We call this whiff punishing. Here, you can see Marisa whiff punish Chun Li's medium kick with a crouching medium punch. But wait, didn't I say Chun Li's crouching medium kick outranges Marisa's crouching medium punch? Yes. But the important thing here is that most attacks in fighting games have extended hurt boxes when they come out. If we slow down the video, you can see an extra hurt box stay out after the hitbox goes away. This is what Maurice's crouching medium punch is hitting. As a side note, it might be better to use a longer range move for a whiff punish. I use crouching medium punch for the sake of making a direct comparison, but you should lab and choose counter options based on your preference and playstyle. Also, if you do not know what hit and hurt boxes are and how they operate, I suggest checking out our explanation video on this channel. So what can Chun-Li do to combat this whiff punish strategy? One simple option is to go forward an extra step to cover the space that the Marisa player is making. Makes sense. But by doing this, Chun-Li is now attempting to make hits at a closer range if the Marisa player does not choose to back off. You know what this means? Chuli is now walking forward into Marisa's medium punch range. This now enables Marisa to threat combos from her fast medium punches. And if the Chuli player recognizes what the Marisa player is doing to get their medium punch pressure, they can simply stop taking the extra step forward to continue bullying Marisa at Chuli's effective range. As you can see, we have come full circle. Of course, actual matches are not this simple because both of these characters have more than these two attacks. Chili can choose to throw out her standing hard punch or kikoken instead of taking the extra step forward to cover the whiff punish attempts. But these attacks have longer startup and recovery, making it more susceptible to things like Marisa's drive impact or phalanx. The important thing to take away from this is that just because a character has strong options at a specific range, it does not mean the weaker side cannot create risks for these attacks, and if they do well, they can manipulate the opponent to misposition themselves out of their effective ranges. This is why you sometimes see high level players walk back and forth without doing any attacks in grounded fuzzy heavy games. They are quickly cycling through the options I've described. Happen, yeah, yes. see, I'm like waiting for the low for it, but yeah. we did see in the very first round where if you whip oh, it, there it that's is. what I'm talking about! That lower for it! With that said, that'll be the end of this video. If you found this helpful, consider sharing this with your friends and community. If this video does well, I will continue to make more episodes covering the other aspects of Footsies. Alright, until next time, have fun with fighting games.